welcome along to the first ever League of 72 fan forum. A chance to debate with four of the main contenders for automatic promotion to the Premier League. Sheffield United, Burnley, Blackburn and Watford represented round the table. Along with Chris Wilder, two promotions under his belt with Sheffield United. And during the course of this mini break, we've all been desperate to get back to discuss the big talking points in the Championship. Let's get started. Chris, I've got to start with you. Two teams represented around this table in Sheffield United and Burnley, currently occupying the two top spots in the Championship. Is that how it's going to finish? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I believe. Um, no doubt, um, obviously, there's uh, some twists and turns in the, the, the magical uh, league that it is, mm -hmm. that we all love about it. Um, so, uh, well contested from, from bottom to top, but uh, they both put themselves in fantastic positions and obviously we're going to debate right the way through um, but as I said there's going to be some twists and turns and no doubt there'll be a couple of teams that possibly think they should be around this table <laughs> and maybe a couple of teams that will try and push towards getting in the playoffs and obviously um, and seeing where that goes. Twists and turns Natalie but so far so good with your gang they seem to be taken to the championship like a duck to water as is Vincent Cumley. Yeah and I, I I don't know whether I was surprised by that or not. Um, I think you look historically at how Burnley have performed in the Championship. The last two times we were there, we won it and then went through the playoffs and we had automatic promotion as well. So we've got a good record, but that's a different era. It's a different manager, different coaching staff, whole different squad of players. We've started this season with 16 new players coming in in the summer, a brand new manager, a new style. Mm -hmm. This Burnley football side is unrecognisable for what you've seen in the last decade. Um, but they've just... They have, they've just, it's clicked straight away. A couple of teething problems maybe in the first 10 games, but they look like they've been playing there their entire lives and it's, it's a joy. A lot's been made of that change of style. And whenever we talk about it, whenever we see Burnley on TV, I'm always very mindful that somewhere there'll be Sean Dyche Oh. beaming down at the TV <laughs> saying, I kept you in the Premier League for all those years. Style, substance, can the two go hand in hand? Is that what you're seeing right now? Absolutely, and there is, there is no, you don't have to separate the two. They're not mutually exclusive. It, it's very much the last 10 years were what we needed at the time. Dash did an incredible job. I love the guy. I think he rightly takes his position as an absolute club legend, as, as you guys will, will, will testify as well. He did what was needed to keep Burnley in the Premier League, keep that money and that income coming in, which was our only source of income, mm -hmm. and put us in a position where financially we could move on to the next chapter. That naturally came to an end. We could see a couple of years before it did finish that it wasn't right, it was stale, it stopped being effective. But that doesn't mean to say that all the parties can't walk away and say, that was brilliant, what's next? Mm -hmm. And Burnley were a club that were desperately in need of a rebrand and company coming in, the new chairman, the new board and a new managerial style is perfect. I'm intrigued to know what the manager thinks about this style and, and, and perception and philosophy and... and the pressure is on to win games, isn't it? And if you do it in a nice way, is that a bonus? I think so. Uh, you know, obviously, Sean is a, is a big mate of, of, of mine. And I think what, um, what Natalie said there is absolutely spot on. You know, it's a, it was an incredible period for Burnley being in the Premier League. Uh, but you see a club now, um, obviously, the business that they did in the, in, in the summer, uh, financially, um, selling some big players and being smart in their recruitment, position specific as well, uh, a change of uh, the way they play, uh, all different ways to win games of football as we obviously know. Um, I feel as well, uh, watching a few of the Burnley games as well, the supporters seem refreshed mm -hmm. and that is no criticism at all. You know, When you're in that Premier League we know how ruthless it is and how difficult it is for teams and their objectives as well always 40 points was was the big was the big number yeah. and you knew if you said yes and the opposition said yes seven or eight times out of ten the Man City's the Liverpool's the Arsenal's the Chelsea's they win those games of football that doesn't take anything away from Sean and what he's done but uh, been mightily impressive what's happened with the new manager uh, and the players coming in and I think as well I think you've got to give credit as well the players that are there as well how they've adapted to it your Brownhills your Corks uh, your Ashley Barnes, uh, Jay Rodriguez. Fan favourite there, nothing. Um, so those yeah. those guys as well. Um, so it hasn't been a complete rebrand mm -hmm. in terms of that. So those guys have been influential members of a, an incredibly successful period for Burnley Football Club. 
And I think, and, and I'm one of those as well, Dave, as well. And people talk about bedding the team in and this, that, and the other. You've got good players, you know, me and you stick yourselves in a five-a-side team. That, that team's going to be all right, <laughs> uh, even though we've never played it. Very we've, gracious. We've that. never played with each other, but <laughs> obviously a big fan of yours. Um, <laughs> but I always think that, you know, good players play with good players, get it, and good, good messages, good coaching, good recruitment, and, and obviously Vincent from the outside looks an incredible leader and um, I'm sure that um, there'll be, uh, there be many more many more good times to come mm. and, I, and, and, you, and as you rightly said you cannot take anything away I've been in that division for, for two years for Sean to stay in it uh, mm. and rightly so I would say not as a maybe a little bit more as a legend I would say arguably the, the, the best manager they, mm. they will have have had and mm -hmm. possibly will ever have Speaking of managers, we'll come on to the experts, of course, in changing managers, Charlie and Watford. That's, <laughs> that's in just a second, I don't care. Have you brought your list? Um, Is he still there? <laughs> <laughs> Is he? Let's talk Sheffield United, because we're talking about players um, and the availability of players. That's been possibly the struggle so far yet. Yeah. The Blade's still in an automatic promotion spot. Yeah, it's been weird. Obviously, so many injuries, so many players that have been struggling. Every week, you're kind of going, oh, another one's gone down, another injury. So it's fantastic to see us still being able to be up towards the top of that division. It's really caught me by surprise, to be honest. Especially, you know, we started fantastically, um, got ourselves to the top of the league, came back from that first international break, and suddenly it felt as though the injuries had caught up to us. Maybe the wheels were starting to come off just a little bit. We went six without a win, and to be honest, I was begging for the World Cup. Um, but then, <laughs> all of a sudden, you know, we started to get a few wins together, you know? I think we won four of the last five before the break, and then I was thinking, actually, could we kick the World Cup down the road a little bit? Um, but hopefully coming back, we'll have some of those back from injury. You know, we're not certain on Anel, whether or not his illness is going to have cleared up, whether or not he's still out. But hopefully he's a big player for us and that will make a big difference to us. Certainly make a huge difference going forward, won't it? And I've, I teed up talking to Charlie about the managerial changes that we've seen. Um, Rob Edwards, to all intents and purposes, a very well-liked, yeah, very successful in a very short period of time as a manager so far. He comes in, he goes out, Slavin Bilic comes in. Um, what was your take? I sensed there was a certain element of disappointment in the way that Rob wasn't necessarily set up for a fall, but all the language was he's here through hello, was it hello high water? They're the infamous words, yes. Which is, <laughs> and I presume hell to Watford is in the top ten of the championship, <laughs> which seemed to be the case. He's moved on, Slavin's come in. Is that the ruthlessness that's needed to get a team back into the Premier League? I think so. It's, it's very hard. I mean, hearing Natalie talk about Vince and company and having a kind of change of culture, mm. I think that's something that us fans, we really wanted. We had a terrible season in the Premier League last year and we just wanted a bit of con continuity. We wanted someone we could stick by, can connect to as fans. And looking at Rob, what he's done at Forest Green, I really love his playing style with the wing-backs coming in. It was kind of a, a breath of fresh air. Um, he came in and I think I want to give him credit because those early games, we beat Sheffield United 1-0, we beat Burnley 1-0. This is amazing, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> That's where we set you up, see. <laughs> <laughs> we beat Middlesbrough. Nicked it. <laughs> 97th <laughs> minute. <laughs> so he got these really big wins, but I think Chris will know it, we weren't cohesive. I don't think we recruited White for his style. We've had one of our best players playing as like a right wing back who's left footed. So it just wasn't right. Um, the performances, the cohesion was not right at all. And the owners do what they, they know best, they make the change. At the time I was a bit gutted because I really wanted to see how the project would go, but one wink from Slavin Bilic and a 4-0 win at Stoke um, and, and a shrug, he kind of stole my heart. So I think it's, it, he's, getting the best, he's getting the best out of what we've got. And I think Slavin Bilic, if you look on paper, in the championship, what he done with West Brom in 1920, and now I think if we do get promoted, don't put me on record saying this, don't clip this up, you like to think we could, we could stay with him. Well, that's, yeah, I, that's... Yeah, yeah, sorry. Is it the thought what, what, of Watford getting promoted? Yeah. Well, what did like, I say? Going up? <laughs> what did I say? It's bringing Ollie out in hives there. Um, Dan, it's been very quiet so far, and uh, unnecessarily so. Blackburn Rovers, would you say one of the teams, one of the divisions entertainers you don't like drawing games you either win or you lose and you've done so uh, pretty well so far yeah definitely if, you've, if you'd have asked me at the start of the season and said would i be in the top four battle 
not a chance. You know, we all expected kind of the word used with transition that I think everyone gets bored of that word, but it should be that. Five and a half years with Mowbray. You know, you mentioned no draws as well. We can't work out what it is. <laughs> we had that win-loss, win-loss run where we looked excellent one game and then the game after we couldn't put four passes together. It's been a strange season and to be sat in the top four going in the World Cup break, obviously going in on a sour note given the last result that I'll what only was bring that? Those reminders. I don't remember that game. I don't remember that, game, I don't remember that one. Uh, <laughs> three, something about... We played some team anyway. <laughs> some team down the road. Some game on Sky. And <laughs> it was just, you know, I think the only issue with us now going forward is can we bounce back from that? I think we'd have rather played the Wednesday after, played the lower side, got a win on the board, and then that game's... Well, it's not done, but... <laughs> played the lower know. side. Yeah, yeah played the right? lower side. <laughs> for once <laughs> but this I think you know if we look at the team so far no one expected us to be you'd expect your Norwiches you know your West Browns were even tipped at the start so I can't complain at the start it's just how we bounce back in no, the next month you say about the expectation levels but we saw from the outside looking in a Blackburn team that was very much involved in the top knockings of the division and then it got to January, Feb even as late as February, I believe, from, from uh, this year, where it did start to tail off. So should we be looking at Blackburn and saying, well, you've done what we thought you might do and perhaps we should expect more? I think part of it is, you know, we did have that bit and we did it a few times under the previous manager. You know, we get to February, we look really good and we drop off. But I think it was a summer of change, a new manager going out after five and a half years, losing a captain, Daryl Ennion, who Chris will know well. Uh, losing Ryan Nyambe to Wigan, losing Joe Rothwell to Bournemouth. That's three players who probably made 100 starts for us last mm. season. So it were a lot of change. A new manager brings, obviously, a new style, a new manager that none of us really knew about just after Thomason's time with Malmo. But I think we're at a stage now where teams, people will start speaking about us and that's usually when we drop off. So <laughs> I, I hope it's different under a new manager. If it does happen, then at least it's the first year under a new manager and next year's the year we should kind of push on. Now, Natalie, when we look at Burnley, the business that they did in the summer, obviously new management staff comes in, 18 of the 22 players brought in in the summer are under 24. So does that suggest that there's a, a long-term eye on this project, as long-term as that can exist in football? I think there's probably a combination of a few things. I think there's a recognition that wholesale changes were needed mm. from the outgoing staff and players. Um, we had the oldest side and a lot of our players were, were well above 30. You, you'd need to bring that down mm. um, to basically compete in the league and to be able to, you know, follow the demands of, of modern football. Um, there then is also a recognition that, you know, we finally got relegated after a good few years and we don't have an income stream other than TV money. People just don't spend billions buying Burnley. It's not that commercially attractive and it, it's hopefully that will change mm. but we have to rely on TV money so you've got to find other ways of generating some income and keeping you ticking along and we hadn't for a long time under our previous board been in the transfer market our previous chairman was very poor in the last I'd say probably three or four transfer windows didn't support the manager at all he had to to make do so we didn't really have that much in terms of sellable assets other than the star players who went in the summer so you've got to look at that and think okay well what's our business model we've got a great um, training facility for our juniors mm -hmm. the youth academy it was um, one of the highest categories it's dropped down a bit now but it's still a good one and what I've been most impressed with is our willingness and our ability to go into the European market and bring in players who don't attract the English um, premium, yeah. the championship premium, and sell them. You know, we got Zaruri for 3.5 million. You know, he's going to go for 30 million at You're some happy point. with him so far, right? He's a, incredible. Yeah. Um, we've brought a manager in who speaks five different languages, so he can effectively coach those players. We see his training sessions where he interchanges his languages depending on who he's talking to. That's hugely important in attracting those flair players, those European players who you can get for a very small price and sell for a profit. So I think it's a combination of everything. It's, it's, it's a, a forward thinking from the board all the way down, which we, we didn't really have under the last regime. Everybody had gone a little bit, Ugh, this is coming a bit to an stale. end. stale, is that very what it stale. felt like, yeah? Fans, um, the manager must have just been, Dash must have been so fed up by the end. Some of his disputes with the old outgoing board were well documented. We knew that there was conflict there. The chairman had been looking to sell for a long time. He tightened it, and everything was just mm -hmm. 
But, and then you, you put all of that into the melting pot that is the Premier League, which when you're not one of the top six sides is a really, really hard league to play in. You are trying to survive every single year. Then you're having to try and play a style of football that just gets you to those 40 points. And just everything just felt miserable. Mm -hmm. And that, listen, I'm very aware of how that sounds to <laughs> fans that say, oh, you've had six years in the Premier League, poor you. But it, it is... The supporter in Again, you... Again, another dig at Blad, then. Yes. That's fine. <laughs> fine. I'll, but I'll the, the supporter in you is results-orientated. Yeah. They want to stay in the league. They want the financial success. They want to be competing as high as they can. Mm. The fan in you, it's an entertainment sport. You pay your money, you go on a Saturday, and you want to watch entertainment. You want that escapism. You know, you want that flair of football. So I think it just was time for an, a new regime and I think it's delivering on lots of various components. I mean, that is such a, a good point and, and to have four ardent fans here to talk about that, that where the business of football meets the pastime of football, yeah. as Natalie's talking, there's a, there's a nod there from you all here, in the sense of what what's the ratio? It's one of those where you've got to balance it out properly because I yeah. think, obviously, we've had a few different managers now in the last couple of seasons. We saw with Slav where he was trying to introduce a new style of play. It was slower, it was patient, and there was a portion of our fans that were never really going to accept that. Mm -hmm. You know, I would sit and talk to my dad and he'd be rubbish. It's too slow. <laughs> um, and that very much summed up his mm. life. It didn't matter how successful that would have been. He just He'd obviously wasn't been used it. to, you He's know, quite a... The glory days. You know, quite a dad's the glory days. Dad's so. all say that. Every Is he a pal of mine? He's on, right? <laughs> <laughs> he was a fella sat behind the dugout. Ooh, like that, yeah. That's what he was. He was immediately like, oh, get one of them centre-backs at centre-forward. <laughs> yeah. um, so, yeah, it really does make a massive difference to how the fans are going to interact with the game. Um, for me, I think it's all about tempo. I think mm. you can work different styles of football as long as the tempo's right. And if it's paid at a sort of quick pace, if you look as though you've got intent to get forward and really impose yourselves on another team, the fans will forgive you for the bad results, unlike if it feels as though you're yeah. being passive. Mm. And that's what it felt like it was for United last year and where he lost a number of the fans. It seems, given what Paul Hagebottom's done as well, taking over in 16, taking them to the playoffs, obviously, second uh, in the division, He's a man you know well. Did, did you know, Chris, that that would be the type of manager he would then become? Is, as, has there been discussions? Would, would he watch how you went about leading Sheffield United? There was a succession uh, planning put in place without going into too much detail about it. Um, he, uh, I've known Paul for quite a long time mm. um, and, um, and seen his career for as a player and then, then develop into a, a young manager, coach manager at Barnsley and he did outstandingly well in getting them up into the championship, producing good young players as well. Obviously, I had to take the job at Le Leeds. That wasn't the, the greatest time for him, mm. but obviously... Is it one that you couldn't turn can, down? You can't turn mm. that down, not at all. And uh, I think everybody around the table recognises what a, such a powerhouse Leeds mm. United football club is, and obviously you, you do. And not when I was there. But they've, not when got, I was, they've got steadily better. But everything <laughs> uh, that, 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 that surrounds it. Yeah. So quite right for him to take that job obviously it didn't go as well as he wanted to do uh, he would have liked it to have been and and then took another another job so Paul I think was at a bit of a crossroads with his with his career mm. and there was talk about him going to work for the FA uh, I sensed an opportunity for to 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 bring him to Sheffield United along with Jack Lester and revamp the the youth system there and with the um, the attitude that Paul has, the qualities that he has from a leadership point of view as a coach uh, and, and, a, and, a, and as a personality as mm. well. So, cut a long story short, um, if anything happened to me, uh, if, I, if I left or, or my contract was terminated or I went on to something else and the, the time was up, there was ideally uh, somebody there to, to take the reins. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, you know, without being too controversial, Dave, I think that that I think maybe the board looked back at that, at now, at, at that time now regarding the appointment of Slav, who was an outstanding manager, and we all know what, how fabulous he Rotis, did at, yeah. at, at, at Fulham. But there was a structure in place for, for, for the club, if, and I think you always have to have a, a look at this if they do get relegated, because you know the first season obviously was a, a memorable, fantastic season. The second season, we've, we all talked about this, and we've had a long discussion about this COVID and no no, yeah. no support in the in the ground, and and, that, and how that team relied on the support that it met it, that it turned losses into draws, draws into wins, and Bramall Lane oh, it was, was an unbelievable place, to take incredible a place, um, and the underdog as well away from home. Um, so, um, and then you look, you, you look at what, what happens if 
you have to have a look at that. What happens if you get relegated and can you, and let's not be embarrassed about it. If that does happen, then where are you set to go back up? And, I, and I'm sure if Paul um, had continued from Premier League days and uh, into, into the Championship, yeah. Uh, yeah, listen, it's 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 if buts and maybes, yeah. but uh, you know his record was, has been has been first class, uh, and now, as you see now, when you go to Bramall Lane, when uh, Burnley did, I'll, I'll what I'll do is <laughs> I'll help you out a little bit. Yeah, I'll stick some back on Burnley. Got an ally now, thankfully. Um, how, how, how difficult it is, how difficult it is for the top team in the. Uh, in the championship to go and get a result, and you mm. saw that afternoon. Obviously, it was it was it was it was a, it was a tough one, wasn't it? And, and it was I mean where we were sat as well because we were covering the game. I can tell you for a fact that they all took great delight in reminding Vincent and uh, Craig Bellamy what the score was over the course of that. And but I, I thought very ominously what he said as well when he was doing his post match was. Um, They've still got to come to turf more, so that I mean, hopefully it's on TV. Hopefully it's an absolute battle because that could be one of the best games of the season. Yeah. Uh, well, it depends if you've learned how to defend corners or not, <laughs> doesn't it? You know. And we spoke Unlikely. about it. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely. Yeah. That's one to definitely keep an eye on, of course. Um, we talked about familiar managers, but John Dal Thomason coming in, Dan, with with his record, of course, won the Swedish League twice with Malmo. Comes in, he's, the, the, there is a contrast between Tony Mowbray and John Dal Thompson. That's that's just a fact. It's not a, a direct comparison. They've got different ways of going about the jobs. Um, the way that he's adapted so far, the way that he's gelled that team together, because there is there is a mixture of some very very promising young players, and obviously now you've got to call him this the Chilean superstar Ben Brereton Diaz. You can't describe him in any other way, shape, or form. Um, Moving forward, when we come off the back of this break, is there a little part of you that's a little bit twitchy about January with regards to who could be in a Blackburn shirt come the end of January? See, I've had this question a lot, and to be honest, I think we'll keep out with him. I think part mm. of Thomason coming in, you know, I'm sure that he and the main man discussed, they were discussed all summer. Mm. There were a few bids in for him, but nothing that we even looked at and even considered, really. It doesn't bother me one bit, because I think that we're going to... The owners... I think that's the one thing they've always done. They've always held out for a player, whether it's, you know, Lenny and last year who left on a free. I think we'd rather keep a player for the year and lose him on a free and give us that chance of getting promoted. I think we'd be shooting ourselves in the foot if someone come in with 10 million for Diaz mm. and then that's any chance of a playoff or a promotion going, even if we're not going to get it. And if he goes in the summer for nothing, at least we can say we've given it a try rather than selling a best player. Mm. It's just shooting yourself in the foot, especially a player who's... You know, we're not like a Burnley, a Sheffield United, a Watford who have, oh, well, if Brereton Diaz is out, we've got someone else to come in. It's kind of, if Brereton Diaz is out, can we get a point? Just what about the players' attitude if, if any of the big clubs come in for him? Where does that leave leave everybody? See, I think Brereton's a, I think he's a switched on that. I think he knows that, he knows he's got his time. I think we forget how young he is as well. You know, he came in for seven million four years ago, five years ago, and he's still only 22, 23. You know, he's got four or five years before he's meant to well, what they call his prime, and he's got a guaranteed chilly spot, which I think's on his mind as well. You know, he's unless he ended up not scoring in fake games, I think he's in that squad. So, I think he switched on. I think, you know, he spoke about how much he loves the club. He said himself he'll be here till the end of the year, mm. whether he is. We don't know. Did he mean the year or the season? <laughs> well, that's it, that's it. I think he changed his words a few times. But that's it with Rovers, I think. We're not in a position we need to sell anymore. We used to be, and you know, when you come down from the Premier League and you don't go back up the first time and then the second time and you get to the third season and you're still not up, you've got to sell your plays, your Jordan Rhodes that went, uh, your Tom Kane is, who ended up getting Fulham promoted. I don't worry this summer. I think, I don't worry this January. When it gets to the summer, I think it'll go unless, you know, we stay where we are and we end up in the Premier League, but that's another Soon debate take. completely. Cool. Is there anything in, in the discussion there, Charlie, that Dan's talking about with regards to... Because that, that, was, that was the big discussion point with Watford, wasn't it? Who's going to be there by the time the window shuts? And they did pretty well across the board. I mean, is that going to rear its head again, do you think, in, in January? Does that make or break your season? Who stays, who goes? It's going to be interesting, I think. Pre-season, we had Dennis, Saar, Pedro. Everyone was after them. They were the players. We were thinking, yeah. are we going to lose all, all three? Um, Saar was supposed to be going to Villa. Gerald Pedro, apparently, Newcastle. He kept two out of three, mm. um, which was really, Ain't really bad. not bad at all. <laughs> and if you looked at us <coughs> when we were in the Championship last season, 
Sar and Pedro had a really big say in us getting promoted. I think we'll keep hold of them. I'm, I'm similar to you. Unless Ismail Sar has a brilliant game against England, um, we don't know how, how that happens yet, Tom, recording, but then I think we'll keep him and Pedro. I think Pedro is an outstanding player. Yeah. I, I think he'll be playing for Brazil Either in so. the 2026 World Cup. Mm -hmm. He's that good. Still very young, 2021, 20, so inconsistent. Um, but if we keep those two players, obvious to say, but we're going to have a massive uh, chance, I think, especially with Slav being a bit more consistent um, to pick one of these guys in the automatic spots. But it's all about that consistency. And we know what the championship's like. Mm -hmm. um, you can go, well, you guys have done it. Win, yeah. lose, win, lose. Yeah, it's a great way to go about it. But if you can get three, four or five wins on the ballots, you're going to be right in contention. Last, last fixture. For, for, for Middlesbrough, 31st of August was against Watford away. Okay. So in the lead up to that, I'm going, I hope he goes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Saar goes. I hope Dennis goes. Dennis has gone, great. Yeah. Saar, come on. Pedro, Newcastle, line. yeah, Villa, <laughs> Saar. Get, uh, two out of three stayed and, and, and on that night they were, like you know, Charlie said, they were, they were top draw. And, uh, and, and obviously, like Charlie says as well, mm. it gives them a, a, a fantastic opportunity of, of getting back into the Premier League, keeping them. The, the players that we've mentioned, uh, and we've, each representative from each club's chucked out names, who's stood out for you? you you've been on the touchline this season. Who, who have you sat back and thought they're up there with some Yeah, the I mean, the, the, the two boys there, the, 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 I think from... Um, uh, uh, and, and obviously Natalie will, will know a lot more about the Burnley Burnley boys, but as I've said, the Brownhills, the Corks, the Cullens, the Rodri, uh, J Rod and uh, and Barnes from a Sheffield United point of view, Illiman and I has is, is, is been incredible. So um, it's sort of breakthrough year last year mm. uh, and, and and kicked on. So that'll be another uh, you know situation for Sheffield United to deal with as. I don't think Burnley will have that situation, but Watford, Sheffield United, and Blackburn will have that situation in January, uh, with 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 Illiman and I mean, uh, Anel as he's well. Been superb, hasn't he? In incredible. It was a young boy that came out of Boreham Wood, and um, so how old was he when he came to United? Then he'd have been he'd have been 18, right, okay. 18, 17, 18. So not necessarily the traditional way of well, Boreham Wood. No, he, yeah. he, he came into Boreham Wood. He was playing street football, uh, and then um, some great work by. By the guys at Sheffield United, boy called Steve Holmes and Paul Mitchell at the recruitment. Mm. Um, uh, he, he came up to come up to Sheffield very humble, a little bit like the David Brooks mould. We sort of had him in the um, in uh, with training with the first team. Mm. I think you know this. This everybody talks about coaching and you know getting on the grass and these these incredible coaches. From from my point of view, especially when I was a young player, training with proper players, training in the first team environment, and Illerman had that. Um, there was a situation in that second season in the Premier League which was quite difficult to put him in mm. because, no disrespect, we were getting beat every other week uh, and it was a real tough environment to play. Like, like Natalie was saying, a different way of playing football yeah, needed for survival. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, you, you're playing your experienced players. Do you want to scar this young player? Um, and, and obviously towards the back end, Paul put him in. Um, and uh, then there was, a, there was a little bit of an issue at the start of the season mm. with, with, with Slav uh, and uh, him not getting selected. But I think he, you know, Gibbs White was incredible last year for, 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 for Sheffield United and really was a catalyst in terms of how, how their season went when Paul, Paul um, Stewart and Jack were, were, were involved. But Illerman, definitely, from, um, from an homegrown point of view, has really taken massive strides forward and... Uh, and no doubt that'll be a situation that Sheffield United are going to have to deal with in January. I'm intrigued. I mean, does anyone stick out from the team sat around here that you'd, you'd quite gladly cherry pick? Benson. The Benson. You'd take, yeah. When we played them at Bramall Lane, I thought first half, he seemed to die off a bit second half because obviously we got on top of him. But first half, he had our left side just yeah, he's done absolutely on toast. Oh, and you'd have uh, quite gladly given them Jack O'Connell at half-time as well. Just <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally a game of two halves. He was phenomenal, was he, in the second half? Yeah, Jack Robinson. Yeah. Sorry, Jack Robinson. Sorry, Jack O'Connell. Yeah, because yeah. O'Connell, obviously, uh, unfortunately, still injured yes, at the minute. But yeah. it'd be great to have him back. But yeah, at half-time, you were thinking if we could swap Robinson and Benson, we'd be all right. <laughs> but then come full-time, you know, Robinson had, had won us round. Um, and he is, he is one of them lads who he has that in him and he can always have a great game. But yeah, Benson really stood out to me. He was superb, me. wasn't he? I love yeah. the way he, he stands his opponent up, doesn't he? Very loves a nutmeg, loves getting on the other side. The I think going, out, going out, uh, out of that, I think talking about standout players, mm. I think 
Guy Crez at Coventry has been yeah. an incredible player. And there's, and there's some, you know, Willock and Chair at QPR, and there's some really good, talented players outside yeah, this, yeah, out there outside this table as well. But Guy Crez for me as well, Dave. Sorry about that. No, no, no. And he seems to be one of. Uh, very quickly, correct me if I'm wrong. That like that old-fashioned number nine that can occupy a back four by himself. Loves yeah. getting a, a across the ground. Loves the physical side of the game. And because it's changed, like to whether it's four, three, three, or, or, or four, two, three, one. That fella that's on his own. I think. He's I think he, he, he talking about that those teams. No doubt, no doubt, you'll come round to it. Those teams that are outside and not around this table. Um, you know, Coventry have got a chance as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very impressed. You know, I thought it was a difficult start for Mark because of the ground situation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, in a, a false position, and, and you've seen them climb the table. So, are they the the Luton, the Huddersfield of uh, of last year? And I think if they can keep Guy Crez and the other players that they've got, I think they've got an half a chance of, of sneaking in. They were fantastic against us. We won three on the bounce for the first mm -hmm. time. Um, thinking, here we go, getting ahead of steam. Mm. Um, home game against Coventry, thinking they get four wins in a row. <laughs> and they tactically, it was, it was a masterclass. Mark Robbins got it absolutely spot on. And Gorka has just run our defence. Mm. Unbelievable, bullying people, running channels, holding it up mm -hmm. and finishing um, when he needed to. I'm surprised we're all going to attack as our favourite championship. Yeah. But um, one player <laughs> I wanted to highlight, um, you've seen more than me, but Arnel, is it Ahmed Hodski? He's... Yeah. Um, I was shocked when you guys signed him. What I've seen of him, he's absolutely unbelievable. Still, like the profile, maybe 23, something like that. Mm. And I think he just carries on the good work that Chris obviously done with those kind of centre-backs, how yeah. you guys yeah. play, physical, can play on the floor. And that's a player that mm. I think Watford, we've got so many great attacking talents. If we could have a really strong, composed defender, that's one that I'd like to cherry pick. I think he's been huge, absolutely huge for us this season. I think one of the things I've noticed in our play is that we do seem attacking wise. So obviously, we always had the centre backs pushing forward. We had O'Connell and Basham, but it felt as though it was such a specialised position that to replace them would be almost impossible. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that a lot with O'Connell out replacing him on the left side has been really difficult. And we've had players come in, but generally they're either defenders or they're wing backs who are having to sort of sit in. Whereas Anel seems as though he's just the ready made replacement for Bash. And I never thought I would want anybody in that position that isn't Bash. <laughs> and suddenly you're going, oh, he's bashing instead of Anel. Um, he's been fantastic. So fickle. Yeah. Fickle fans. That seems to be the. I mean, it's, it's funny, Charlie, that you, you've, you've chucked it back towards what the defensive side of it, and we'll get. I'm intrigued to see what Chris's take on that because there was a there was a not a stereotype, but a very straightforward opinion on what Sheffield United were under Chris Wilder. It was all about flying wingers, and I'm sure it takes a lot more than uh, sorry flying centre halves to get promoted. Um, but from the point of view of, of of spreading goals around, it seems like your gang have, have got that nailed at the moment without wanting to jinx them coming off the back of the World Cup break. Thanks for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously led, led forward by J-Rod as well. Definitely. I think one of our biggest concerns in the summer was companies' insistence that we didn't need to go into the market and buy a striker. And I was as guilty as anybody of going, is this Vincent Company showing his inexperience of the championship? Because to me, unless you have a striker who will score 20 goals in the championship, you ain't getting out of the championship. Mm. Um, as tends to happen a lot. I've been proved very wrong there with that. Um, he did say to us all the time, look, we're bringing in these players, the style of play that we want to implement into the side. We will share the goals around. And I didn't know... I, I was very confident with Jay of how he would fit back into the championship. Um, I wasn't so sure how Ashley would adapt. It, it's one of those where... Burnley fans were having to come on the back of a decade of a certain of a continuity. We mm. had the same players every week, the same manager. We knew how yeah. we would play. We knew what our business model was. We knew where we, we sat in the Premier League. And there's a comfort that comes with that consistency. And I think there was a fear among Burnley fans. Even though we now know that we needed to get relegated and we needed that rebrand and we needed that complete clear out, there's always that thought when you're Burnley that, this was our one shot. And if we go down, we're never going to go back up again. We're never going to find another Sean Dyche. We're never going to get that moment. That's not been the case. So us as fans are slowly learning to trust, oh God, I can't believe I'm going to say it, trust the process, <laughs> which is what we're told. Um, such management Such speak, management I'm so disappointed yeah, that you said I'm, that. I'm, I'm, <laughs> please, can we edit that bit out? That would be great. Um, <laughs> but we are having to learn to trust that and mm. just to take a leap of faith and just to hand over our club to these new manager and these new players and say, look, this is what it means to us. We will back you, but... Mm. And, and it's proven right. They're going out there and they are 
they're learning the philosophy of the town, they're getting involved in the community, and they are buying into companies' um, vision of being a team and sharing the goals and all pitching in. So, yeah, I've no complaints for me. I would still like a striker, but <laughs> <laughs> I've learned to trust him. <laughs> to trust the process. Trust the process. Oh, God. Two cups, please, two. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just a, a touch on Blackburn, Dan, with regards to, we talked about Ben Burton and Diaz, but in someone like Sam Gallagher, um, he, he, he plays such a pivotal role, doesn't he? Can you give us just a bit of insight of what you've seen with your own eyes with regards to what Sam brings? Because you've got the wonderful flourishes of Ben, but he's an undoubtedly a presence, isn't he, going forward for Rovers? Yeah, and I think he's one that goes under the radar. You know, if anyone ever mentions Black, and if I speak to any fan of any other club, Brereton Diaz, the first player that's mentioned. We, uh, which we've done here today, yeah. and I apologise. <laughs> and you probably go on five <laughs> others before you get to Gallagher. And Gallagher's... I think his influence is not scoring goals. You know, you judge a striker by the goals, especially one that you maybe don't watch every week. If you look at, you know, if you looked at what McBurney were doing in the season and if he'd only scored five goals, you'd just go, oh, he's had a poor season. But you don't look what he's done elsewhere. And that's what Gallagher is. He runs about, he puts the pressure on. You know, it maybe he's not the 20-goal-a-season striker that we'd love to have two of them, but he's not that man. He's the guy who's going to put the pressure on, uh, knock the ball around, bring the ball down when it gets lumped up, when you've got to go long. And, you know, you've just got to look at the stats from when he's played and when he's not played. I think we've won 10 of the 12 games he started and that just sums up his mm. time with the club. The new Mike Noel. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Oh, gosh, yeah. really? Do we he have always to bring enjoys that playing Middlesbrough as well. Cheer and no. Well, I mean, so, someone has to play the foil, don't they? That, that's how these partnerships and teams are put together, and that's that's exactly what he's doing. And I'm the same. I'm the same regarding regarding Burnley. Mm. You know, however the goals come, I don't think anybody's that bothered. Before I get your predictions, gang, um, I'm intrigued because we've all been sat here, we've all been listening to Chris and talking amongst ourselves. Obviously, you've all seen Chris in action in a different way, stood on a touchline, directing the traffic. What it, is the is the man that you meet the same as the perception of possibly the man that you thought you were going to meet? Can I use this in my new interview, <laughs> by the way? Uh, part of it. References. Ex exactly, yes. References yeah, at the what bottom. The fans love you. Uh, you know, They're you under know, right I'm, pressure now, David, I, I, aren't they? I, I, I'm intrigued because, because the, again, having the pleasure of sitting where I sit to watch games, there is that dialogue. I say dialogue. It's normally one-way traffic with regards to what the home fans think about the man. Have you had any experiences of, of watching Chris Wilder's sides? And yeah, I've, I just think what Chris did with that Sheffield United mm, yeah. team, he innovated mm. for a team, a newly promoted team, to innovate in the, the brutal, hard Premier League. And I think um, doing it, being kind of down to earth, like how he is, honest, approachable. Yeah. Um, was 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 brilliant to watch, um, yeah. and I just think from afar, I'm surprised he hasn't had the Watford gig yet. But <laughs> he's, one of the, he, he, he's, he's one of those which, like, you'd really like to get behind a manager like that, passionate, mm. um, has got a philosophy, has done it before. Um, so, yeah, from, from my experience, I've seen him rock up a Vicarage Road and beat us a couple of times, but. Um, I think what he's done in the game has been really impressive and a really nice guy to be. <laughs> got the money. <laughs> no, obviously from a United perspective, just everything was just so good, <laughs> really. Um, so it was, it was incredible to see, but I think then, like, just coming in today, like, I looked like a demon in the headlights, I think, when I walked in, not knowing what I was doing. Straight over, introduced himself, said hello. Um, I think that's the said thing. Said the shirt was a bit tight. <laughs> yeah, he's I'm, a bit tight because he's not got a new shirt. <laughs> Uh, I weren't going to point that out while I'm still on camera. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just, yeah, being great to meet you. Mm. <laughs> going off that vibe that supporters aren't daft, I'm going to ask you now about what could happen come the end of the season. Oh, God, what a, li what a line-up that was. Yes, um, so top yeah. two automatically and the other one that would go through. The wonderful lottery that is the playoffs. From what I've seen so far, I've... Sorry, I've got very little doubt that it will be Burnley Sheffield United who are a straight shootout for the automatics. Um, still a long way to go. Mm -hmm. There's no, literally, hell will freeze <laughs> over before I put them lot anywhere near this. So I'm going to say Watford as well for a playoff win. They're just the, the strongest sides that I've seen so far. Um, yeah, I don't, I, don't I, I, I don't see any reason why it won't be us three. Ah, I'm inherently a negative man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's a Yorkshire man, that's why <laughs> we're all the same. Say, we, can't, we can't commit too early, I can't get too positive. Um, but no, I think from what I've seen so far, with how United have coped with their injuries, I think Burnley will win it. 
probably run away by the end. I think it's between us for second, and I'm going to say that we'll take it, because I think with injuries coming back, we have got that quality. But I think in the playoffs, it's hard to predict. I think it'll be between yourselves and probably Norwich. Um, and it's just both of you have got that know-how to get promoted, and it's one of those two. And that's just the right side of condescending, isn't it? Just to say... I think that you'll get through the playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> that, was that was a trying to be nice when I think Norwich are going on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have what's your thoughts? Do you, do you echo any of what you've heard so far? Um, a bit different. I, Feel free to my, chuck water and drink. Yeah, and my, my tip <clears throat> for the beginning of the season was Sheffield United. I thought they'd continue their good work from what they're doing back in the last season, have that continuity. I think you've got really, really nice balance from the squad's experience in die. I actually think you guys are going to win it. I think, I think we're going to come and get uh, another silver medal wow. and finish second place. I just think with Burnley, um, looking you in the eyes on, now. <laughs> Tell us the thing with come Burnley. I What's think, the thing I with Burnley? Burnley? I think I was, my eyes were open for that Sheffield United game and how you guys just fell apart. Um, I think you've got a really, really young team. Um, don't get me wrong, you've been outstanding. I think there's been a couple of games where you've really nicked it at the end against like Rotherham and they've made it really hard to beat. I think... One or two defeats, I don't know how those young players might react. And I think, especially us, you guys, we've got a bit more experience in kind of having that bounce back ability to know to come back to win it. So, <laughs> um, I'm just hearing this noise. <laughs> and buzzing my microphone. There was a fly before it's gone. Yeah, now. that fly's gone in my ear. So I'm really, really sorry because I love Vince and company. I love what you guys do, but I think it might be a year, year too early. Um, and I actually think uh, Norwich will go up in the playoffs. I just think their experience. Pookie's guarantee. They've mm. got some good Nunes, Sara, mm -hmm. really good. Again, they've got that kind of experience now. How Dean Smith's done it before. Um, I hate going up and down with them, but um, <laughs> we're just we're just yeah. me meant to be. So it's, mm -hmm. yeah, Sheffield, forever intertwined. Yeah, Sheffield United, <laughs> Watford, and Norwich for me. You need to be a bit oh, more condescending for Burnley. <laughs> That's just my only tip for the future. <laughs> What's your thoughts, Dan? I don't think I'll be allowed back in Blackburn if I predicted Burnley to get anywhere. It's Tough one, I think. Sheffield United, I think, will run away with it and mm. just end die up front, all the quality they have. It's probably between Burnley and Norwich in my mind for the automatics. I think if Norwich got automatics, Burnley wouldn't go up through play through the playoffs. Gasps in the audience <laughs> there. <laughs> go on, I'll go for Sheffield United and Norwich, and I think Watford will win the playoffs. Anything that you've heard there, Chris, that you would really interesting <laughs> disagree with? I think that's, I think that's a great with? point regarding Burnley. The, the, the fearlessness that they've got at the moment with the young players changes after Christmas yeah. when, the, when the finishing line mm -hmm. uh, becomes closer. I think this is a key period for Sheffield United to get yeah. their best players back fit and healthy. I believe they've got the strongest squad. Mm -hmm. uh, Zanderberg getting back, if they can keep Hillerman and Ollie Mack fit, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Uh, Watford. I believe if the front three, front two now, sorry, it was the front three, <laughs> front two and the players that they've got, I think if they get excited in January and February mm. and see the Premier League, I can see them going on a big run. Yeah. Uh, Blackburn, I think, would be an incredible achievement to get in the playoffs. Um, I think in terms of losing the players and what, what's happened and, um, and the young players as well, um, I think that would be a, a, a fabulous achievement. I think the, the time was right for Dean and Norwich as well. I think he had the same situation at Villa yes. uh, with COVID. They reset um, and had a, a fabulous run that ultimately um, kept them in the Premier League. Yeah. And Dean's a smart manager. Um, and uh, I think, like I said, I think a lot of Norwich uh, supporters, Norwich City supporters, will be a little bit disappointed they're not sat around this table. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And, and I do believe the experience of the Sheffield United players, the Bulldogs, the Egans, the Ender Stevens, the Norwoods, the McBurnies, um, the Flex, will just have enough know-how. And I do believe as well, Bramall Lane as will become a really difficult place to, uh, for anybody to go and get anything in the second part of the season because of how powerful the supporters are. So I would say, I've not really answered the question yet, have I? <laughs> Come on. I would say... <laughs> Politician there. One, yeah, well done. One, but don't run away with it. Yeah. And I would say sneak in two playoffs. Sneaky Burnley. <laughs> sneak in two playoffs. <laughs> Watford, uh, Norwich, uh, 
I like your dance, so I'm going to stick uh, <laughs> like Bernie. You can get us a pint afterwards. Um, and uh, I, I think Coventry will, will, will get in the playoffs. Coventry will get in the playoffs. Uh, and I think the big two, Watford, and I think if Watford say yes on the day, I think they can destroy anybody. And I think they've got big time players. So, yeah, sorry, ex Premier League teams, <laughs> parachute payments, and yeah. all stuff like that. I think you'll find. One, two, and three will be uh, will be playing Premier League next year. Touch wood. Everybody <laughs> touch wood. <laughs> oh, That's a laid a few fears, hasn't it? I don't know if I don't know if it's necessarily fears. I mm. think we are. It, Premier League is what it is, yeah. and I'm probably going to draw some criticism from saying this, but when you are Burnley and you do get promoted again, there is a little bit of a oh that comes with that <laughs> because this season's been incredible you're winning you're competing you mm. are entertaining you can afford players that you can't afford in the Premier League and then you, I do think it will be different when we do go up I think a Vincent Company Burnley is very different to a Sean Dash Burnley but you've still got you're going back up again you, you get the you've got VAR to contend with you've got the global am I pressures. listening to this <laughs> am I really yeah, listening no, to this listen, I, it, you've got to get there and it's incredible being there but it does come with challenges when you are not it, the top it six it does come with challenges but it's the only place to be I think yeah, the championship agreed. is an incredible competition and you know the amount of teams that have been in the Premier League that are in the championship now I've got to say out of 24 teams what it's got to be 19 20 yeah, yeah. that have tasted Premier League yeah. I mean, there's seven in League One alone, isn't there? So it just goes I, to And show. then you talk about League One yeah. and how difficult that is. And, and obviously Sheffield United have been there for six seasons and Portsmouth and Sheffield Wednesday mm, and exactly. Ipswich. Leeds. Yeah. Leeds, And actually Sunderland. the Championship's only a good division. We're only having the season that we are because we've just been relegated. We've got parachute yeah. payments. We can attract the Vincent companies. We can bring these players in who have got the goal of the Premier League. You ask Borough fans, you ask West Brom fans right now whether they're enjoying the championship and they're like, they will be screaming at me right now saying, <laughs> yeah, what, what saying, yeah. on earth are you talking about? Yeah. Um, there's, just a, there's just a reality. And again, it's down to that fan in you, not the supporter. The supporter wants to be in the Champions League. The supporter wants to be in the Premier League. The fan realises that you're in for a hard graft when you go yeah. up there. So it's just that enjoyment level, that, which is what we live for. We I, think it, I think it shows, as you said, going to... Going to Turf Moor and obviously listening to you, Natalie, it, it, it does. You've been re energised, galvanised, and, mm. and as we talk about, nothing away from what, what Sean Dyche and where's the, where's the statue going? Yeah. Um, Sean Dyche, not My Vincent Company. <laughs> <laughs> that's where that's going. <laughs> Aggressively looking through yes. your back window like yes. that. <laughs> All day. But you should have a caption day. as you walk past yeah. it, like making a joke. Yeah. These lot down moaning about all this Premier League action. I know, it could years. be the season, <laughs> mate. It could be the season. Of course. Anyway, this has been absolutely fantastic. The first ever League of 72 fan forum. Robust debate, plenty of stuff to talk about. Comment if you've watched this video. Tell us exactly what you think uh, from myself and our lovely four supporters and, of course, Chris Wilder. Thanks for joining us and hopefully see you all very soon.